and welcome to Joe and Zach Survival. Today we're going to do a wild edibles video on the wild rose plant and it's late in the season, um, fall just started. So we're just going to be doing it on the rose hip and what we can do with it. Well this is the wild rose plant. Um, we have several varieties of the rose. All of them are equally edible. Um, earlier in the season you can eat the flowers, the petals, you can eat the leaves. Basically the whole entire plant is edible. But we're just going to talk about right here the rose hip. And we can make tea out of this. If you were to eat three of these right here, would equal the same amount of vitamin C as one orange. The seeds in it, if we grind those down, are high in vitamin E. But we're just going to pick these and then we're going to see what we can do with them. Now if we take a look inside of one of these, They have several decent size, seed, size seeds in them, and I'm really interested to see what we can do with them. I mean, I know they're high in vitamin E. I know we can grind them and get uh, almost a slurry out of them. And that slurry you put into stuff or the, the water from it, and that will be high in vitamin E, and you can put it into different meals. But I want to see if we can grind it and make it into something else. Just wanted you guys to be able to see this, that most people you think of the rose plant is just that little plant that's in your garden. And these are wild roses, and if you look at this plant that Zach is picking off from, I mean, he's a little bit sitting kind of low, but it's as tall as he is. And if you look at the stock on this thing, you know, it's as big around as almost my middle finger. So they get to be a pretty big plant. One interesting thing about the rose hip here is similar to, like, um, the Labrador tea, which is an evergreen, you can pick that all winter long. These also, they're not an evergreen, but these dry hard on the plant and they will be available in the winter if the animals haven't gotten them yet. And since they are so high in vitamin C and several other things, this is a great survival food. So there we go. We ended up with quite a few things that look like little tiny cherry tomatoes. So now it's going to be a long task, but what we have to do is we're going to cut these in half and we want to get the seeds out of there. The seeds are really high in vitamin E, but the seeds and the little prickly, hairy things that surround it are really irritating. So you don't really want to eat those straight out. So what I'll do is we're going to go through and just pick these out, and what we'll end up having is this outer skin with a little bit of pulp that's in there. And the interesting thing, if I can just pull this out like this, is uh, when you eat this, it, it does, you know, it has a fruity taste. And what it reminds me of is eating an apple. I mean, like I grow apples here, and we have um, real crisp apples. It reminds me of eating an apple that you buy in the store that's really nasty. Be I mean, you eat it, and it's the kind that should have been put into like a pie because there's no crispness, crispness to it. And uh, that's what it tastes like. So. That's really good, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull all this stuff out, and then what we want to do is we're going to dry it, and then we're going to grind it, and we are going to save it for a flour. I have the first pan here finished. I've got a lot more of these to do, and it's very time consuming. But I just sit there and watch TV and cut them in half like I showed you and scoop them out. And you end up with a bunch of these that look just like tiny little uh, cherry tomatoes, and you just take the insides out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw these because I don't have a dehydrator and I could put them out in the sun but I'm going to quicken it up. I'm going to throw it into the oven and my oven goes down to 170 and I'll leave the door cracked open and I'm just going to dry these until they're brittle and then once they're brittle it's something I can grind up into a flour. It took about three hours and I got these dried out. Now they're real crisp. So I am and I'm surprised that when they did dry out, I thought they'd get a lot smaller and they actually kept some size to them. So I'm just going to put them in here like I do all the other stuff and we'll see how these grind up. Hopefully, we might have a really pretty tasty flour type substitute.
that seems to grind up pretty good. It's really weird, you know, it tastes, when you eat it when, they're, when they were wet, it's, it tasted like a mushy apple. And it smells exactly like um, when you open up a can of V8. <laughs> and it has a ton of vitamins in it, so maybe that'll kind of remind me what's in this. Uh, this way here, it ground up a little bit, a um, little bit gritty. Some of it doesn't. Some of it's a little bit finer. Maybe I'll run it through the grind one more time here, but this is pretty good. Okay, I went ahead and run it through another grind to see if I could get it finer. That's more like it. Still coarser than regular flour, but it's a lot better. Still smells like that V8. Let's taste this one. It almost tastes a little bit like if you had a dried V8, but maybe that's just because that's the way it smells. I'm not sure. I don't know that that was really me. So now I, all I have to do is get it packaged, and then this winter when we're up at the tent, this is going to make another bannock to add to all the other ones that we are going to be trying out. I hope you guys liked that video. Uh, thanks a lot for watching the Joe and Zach Survival Channel on how to make a rose hip flower substitute.